So something that I see coming up a lot among beginner printers, beginner illustrator users is how do I apply vector textures to my artwork? Adding texture can kind of give you a couple of extra style points or maybe liven up an otherwise boring piece of artwork, or maybe it's just a little bit too solid, a little bit too heavy handed, and you need to break it up and let it breathe. This is definitely a trick that you need to have in your arsenal, whether you're starting off as a designer, a printer, whatever. It's very easy to do. There are a lot of ways to do it in Illustrator, but believe it or not, there is a right and a wrong way to do it. We're gonna show you the right way to do it. But before we get started, if you need vector textures, I created four grit textures for this tutorial that you can download for free. The link is down in the description below, so go grab those. And speaking of links in the description, I also gotta say, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of killer classes taught by expert creatives in their field to help us all step up our game and learn some new skills. Seriously, anything you could ever wanna know about design, about Adobe Illustrator, about, well, anything in life really is on Skillshare and you get all that for less than 10 bucks a month. I've been a Skillshare member for years. I've learned so much about what I do there. I actually just finished a class by DKNG Studios called 10 Tips and Tricks to Speed Up Your Illustrator Workflow. We like to think we're pretty good at what we do around here, but there's always room for improvement and I definitely picked up a couple cool little things from that class. And since they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving away two months of premium for free to the first 1,000 of you guys who click the link down in the description below and join up for the fun. So make sure to check that out. Skillshare has been such a huge thing in helping me build my career, build this business, and I cannot recommend it enough. But let's get into this. I'm going to show you guys two different ways on how you can do this. The first way is probably the most common way that I've seen this taught, which I would say is semi-correct. It's okay for some things and not for others. And then the second way is what I would call the proper way to deliver artwork to a client, to a printer, whatever you're doing with it. Okay, so the first way is really, really easy. Let's jump over here to our grit textures. Let's copy this guy and let's paste it over top of, uh, let's paste it over top of our seeker skull here. Obviously you're not gonna see that because it's black. Let's just go ahead and make it red for now so we can see what's going on. Actually, that looks pretty damn cool how it is right now. I may or may not have to make a blood spatter texture now because this, uh, th there's something there. But anyways, let's just scale this thing up a little bit. Make sure we got everything covered here. Let's place it. Wherever, this is kind of just gonna be a judgment thing. Place it wherever you think you wanna see stuff punched out of it. I'm just gonna put it right there in the middle. It's probably good enough. So now to make this work is literally as easy as clicking a couple things. So you're gonna wanna go up to your top menu and hit window, scroll pretty much down to the bottom where it says transparency. We're gonna open up our transparency window. I'm also gonna make my texture black again. Sometimes when it's a different color, it won't show the black background through. It'll show up as like a dark gray or something like that. Sometimes color just messes with it. So I can see where my texture is now. It's where I want it. I don't need to see it anymore. Let's just go ahead and make that black. Cool, it looks like the texture's already on there, but really it's not. It's just black on a black background. So let's click and drag and select all this stuff. And we're just gonna go up here in the transparency window and click make mask. Now that's gonna make your design disappear like it has here. All you have to do is uncheck this box where it says clip. And there we go. That's our design done. We can move it here off the artboard so you can see it's done its job. It'll show through on pretty much any background. So why this is only the semi-correct way of doing this is because this should only be done for internal use only. Let's say you're just making up some mock-ups quick or you're just testing the theory as to whether or not texture is gonna work on your artwork. That's literally the only reason you should be doing it this way. And unfortunately, I've seen tutorials from designers that I even look up to in the industry saying that this is how you should send out your files for screen printing to clients, whatever, and that's just, that's just not true. This is not the way you should be doing this. If you send this out for screen printing as is, it's not going to work out very well for you and there's a good chance that you're probably gonna be getting charged extra for our work setup fees. So let's say we're sending this design out for screen print. Let's say we're gonna print this design in red on a black shirt. That would mean we need to put an underbase underneath it. So this is gonna be our white underbase right here. And with an underbase, you have to choke it off. You'd fill it with a spot color and then you'd add a stroke to it. Um, let's just go ahead and make that yellow real quick. We've got our stroke on there. And now if we zoom in on it, you can see that none of the texture was actually choked off. Only the outer paths of the design were, and that's because the texture aren't paths, it's a mask. So right there, we've already run into a very big problem. Some printers may not even notice that and just go ahead and print it off, and you're gonna end up with some ugly prints with white underbase poking out all around it, and just, it's not gonna look very good. Or you can run into formatting issues. You don't know what software the person on the other end is opening this up with. They may not have Illustrator. They may have Corel Draw or Affinity Designer or something like that, where you could run into file corruption, or it may may not actually even read that this is there and you're starting at square one again. This is just 
Not a good way to do this. Don't ever output your files like this. This is like the equivalent of not outlining and expanding fonts. Don't even get me started on that. It's something I deal with every day and just <laughs> this should be for internal use only. Use it as a quick and dirty way just to see what it's actually gonna look like or for mockups or whatever. Other than that, toss it. So let's show you the other way now. This is how we would output a file to a client or set it up for print, whatever. This is how it's done. So first of all, before we start, I'm gonna tell you right now that this way is destructive. So make sure that you have a saved copy of your artwork somewhere else or have another artboard with it on there, whatever you're gonna do. Just make sure you have another clean copy of it to go back to somewhere. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this hideously ugly yellow stroke. Now, if you wanna get rid of that transparency mask, all you gotta do is just select it. Make sure you still have that transparency window open and click release, that will get rid of that. And now we can just close that window out altogether. We don't need it anymore. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna make it red again so I can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm also gonna go down into my layers tab and I'm gonna turn that off for a second so it's not in my way because I wanna make this piece of artwork a compound path before I do anything. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on it real quick. I'm gonna hit Command-8 or Control-8 if you're on a PC, and that's gonna turn it into a compound path. Now I can turn my texture layer back on, and I'm actually gonna do the exact same thing to that. So I'm gonna select just that layer, and I'm gonna hit Command-8. That's now also a compound path we're good to go for the next step. If you skip that step, things can go wrong. Things will disappear on you. It's not what you want. So make sure anything you're working with is a compound path and not a group. So the next thing you wanna do is just select all this stuff again. And you're gonna wanna go over here to your Pathfinder. If your Pathfinder isn't already open, just go up here to Window and scroll down to you see Pathfinder and open it up. So we've got our texture and our artwork selected. Also make sure that your texture is over top of your artwork in your Layers tab. Otherwise things are gonna go weird here as well, but we're set up properly. So we've got that selected. Let's go over here to the Pathfinder and click this one right here where it says minus front. And that's all you have to do. So what this has done is actually taken those pieces of texture and punched them out of your original artwork. It's removed whatever was behind it. Now those paths are closed off. If we zoom in on this thing here now, you can see that these are all closed paths. If we're gonna make this an underbase for something and we add a stroke to it, you can see that it's now filling up the right way as if it should, whereas the other way, this, none of this worked. This is also how you should be sending out your final files for stuff. A rule we have here is make it as idiot proof as you possibly can. So if you're sending stuff out with masks and all kinds of other effects going on there, again, like I said, you could run into formatting issues. Things just might not work on the other end. If you do it like this, things are gonna be the right way when they show up to that person every single time. But we're not done yet. Let's say that you have to do this to a multicolor design. There are some added steps and it's a little bit more daunting, but again, we're not doing anything different than we just did. We just kind of have to repeat this step a couple of times. I'm gonna show you that real quick. All right, so I got my logo here. It's three colors while it's showing up as two. There's a black background there that you can't really see. But anyways, so the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna ungroup this thing. So I'm gonna hit Shift Command G and ungroup all that stuff. So if you look down here in my layers tab, you can see that after I ungrouped it, everything separated into individual colors, nice and neat because we always think of this stuff ahead of time when we're making our files. You may not run into that. You may end up ungrouping this thing and it's just gonna turn into a big list of stuff, which is every single piece in that design. If that happens, it might freak you out. Don't let it, this is very, very easy to fix. The first way is with the magic wand. You can just hit the Y key on your keyboard and select a color. We're gonna select the gold and that's gonna select every single piece of gold on our artboard right now. And we're gonna hit Command G. That's gonna group all the gold into one thing. The other way to do it is to do it with the select menu. So let's grab the gray now. We're gonna grab that. Go up here to our select menu and go down to where it says same and then pick fill color. And again, that's gonna select every single piece on the artboard with that fill color. And again, command G to group it together. That's all you have to do. So we've got our colors all separated, nice and neat. Now we have to do the same thing like we did in the first one and turn each one of these into compound paths. So I'm just gonna start off with the gold here, select my gold, hit command eight. There's a compound path, let's select our gray. Command 8 that one. Let's select the black, even though there's really no point in it being there, and turn that into a compound path as well. If you don't separate them and just turn into one big compound path, let me just show you what happens here. Let's just make another little copy over here. Let's turn that into one giant compound path. And now as you see, things just went totally horrible. Uh, I don't even know how to really explain this to you properly, but this is not something that you wanna do. So make sure that you're turning each color into its own compound path. All right, so let's go back and grab a texture. Let's grab this super, super dirty one and put that over top of it. Let's just hit Command V, place that over. I'm gonna fill that with red also so I can see what's going on here and just move it around until it feels like it works where it's at. I think uh, I'm probably gonna scale this up a little bit 
seems like it's a little bit too much. Yeah, that's probably pretty good right there. All right, so that looks good. Again, we're gonna do the exact same thing like we did the first time. We're gonna select our texture, we're gonna hit Command-8, make that a compound path, and we're also going to hit Command-C to make a copy of where it sits right now because we're gonna need multiple of those. Actually, I'm gonna close my properties window real quick so that we get a little more room to look at the layers tab. So we're gonna grab our texture, which is on top, and we're also gonna hit Shift and select our gold. And we're gonna do the same thing with the Pathfinder. We're gonna hit minus front. That's just punched it out of our gold. Now, as you see, the texture disappeared. We don't have that anymore. And that's why we made that copy. So now what we gotta do is just hit Command F and that's gonna paste that texture in place exactly where it was before. And we've got another one to work with now so we can take that and now we'll just hit Shift and select our gray layer and do the exact same thing again. We're gonna use the Pathfinder minus front gonna punch it out of the gray layer now. Again, we're gonna do one more Command F and that's gonna paste it in place one more time. And we're gonna hit Shift and select our black layer. And we're going to minus front one more time. And that's all you gotta do. Now, as you can see, what that did was it kind of messed around with the arrangement of, of my layers here. Not a big deal. All we gotta do is just take that black layer and move it behind everything again. We're good to go. Now we can just select it all, Command G, group it all together. And now we got one nice finished piece with some nice distressing on it, punched out of there, clean, ready to go. And that is it. That is the proper way to send your files out for print or to clients or whatever. It is very, very easy to do. It does not take a whole lot more time than to do it with the transparency mask. It's literally like an extra minute. And this way it's dummy proof. It's ready to go for whoever gets it on the other end. If you like this video or it helped you out in any way, drop a thumbs up on it for me. That shit helps. And if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. I will definitely try to help you out in there. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. You motherfucker. Illustrators always crashing. Oh, right on cue. Ugh. What are you doing? Are you eyeballing that microphone like you're gonna do something to it? Don't. The amount of people who are sending out files without outlining or expanding stuff, it's just, oh, it's insanity to me. It's day one stuff. Come on, people. I could make a whole video ranting about this. I won't, but I could. Oh, and you're back. Did you just cat fart? You did. I heard that little squeak come out of you. <laughs> Stupid little arms. Get out of here. Damn it. Get me all hairy. Well, I'm wearing something with vector texture in it. I didn't even do that on purpose either. That's one of those happy accidents. I feel like this is probably going to be the shortest video that I've ever made. I really hope it's not a useless piece of shit.